Hey everybody, before we get into this video, I just want to give you an update on our 1966 Ford Thunderbird 8-track uh, slash AM radio. It's a Motorola model T6 SMS. Uh, that radio did actually sell on eBay um, to actually a member of our YouTube community. I won't tell you who. But what I can do is show you the vehicle where it's going to live. Um, I also um, want to, will follow that up with just a, a copy of the donation that's already been made to St. Jude. Uh, on for all the proceeds so um, really really good story thank you for all of you for following along and congratulations to the person who uh, who's gonna enjoy that radio All right, let's get on to our uh, to our topic for today right back hey everybody we're doing something a little bit different today um, those of you that uh, follow our friend Joe or uh, who's restoring a 1966 Thunderbird um, you'll recognize this probably this is a cigarette lighter. So John posted in a video that uh, his cigarette lighter uh, obviously is not working. And um, he was going to try to figure out what to do with it. And I said, send it to me. I want to try to restore it. So let's make a video on a cigarette lighter for a 1966 Thunderbird. I haven't seen one on YouTube. So, uh, so here we are. And this is the assembly. And you'll recognize that top. It looks very similar, similar to the knobs on the radio. There's the heating element. And here's the socket that it goes into. And on the back of these things, they have a fuse. Okay? And John was saying in his video that he couldn't get this fuse off. I can't either. It just spins. So I don't know what the story with that is yet. But the way this thing works is there's a sleeve here that comes off. This is where your ground connection goes, I assume. Right there on that tab. Then you have the actual socket. So when John was demonstrating it... <clears throat> He said, you know, you push it in, it's supposed to stay in, but it doesn't. Well, there's a reason, which I spotted right away. See this clip here? Right there? It's supposed to be one on that side, too. It's broken off. And let's see if we can get some light in here so we can show you. If you look deep inside this thing, it's all rotted and rusted and pitted and everything else. I can probably clean it up, but with that piece broken, it's not going to be very helpful. So what our plan is going to be is to replace this socket. Now I did find a cheap one like this. It's actually exactly the right size. It'll fit. And what I want to try to do is one of two things. Either reuse this replacement socket with this fuse or drill out the center of this one. And you see the clips here? Here's one and there's the other. Replace the clip in this thing. It's going to be one of those two. That's how we're going to fix this thing. And I told John this is going to be my gift to him for his car when it's done. So this is uh, this is the plan. So let's let's talk about this fuse. So this fuse just spins. They do sell replacement fuses. I've seen them on eBay, but there's no explanation of how it comes on and off. I do believe that it's threaded, and one of the reasons why I think that is because when I look at this replacement socket, there's threads here. So this thing's got to be just stripped. So. What we're going to do is we're going to take this top off. I've already popped it off just to look at it. And we're going to look and see what's in here and see if we could free up that mechanism and get this thing off and then test it. I don't even know if the fuse is good. So this top comes off and you'll see here there's just a metal spring clip there. And um, as you can see here, there is a thread right in there. And that's the part that's spinning right here. Right? It's just the outside that's spinning, but the inside is not. So we're going to try to spin that other piece right here and see if we can get this thing to come off. I'm probably not in the camera. I'm doing this with you guys here live here, so let's see what happens. So it looks like just the collar spins. I honestly don't see this being a fuse, but I could be wrong. I don't want to destroy this thing, but if I have to, I do. I'll just re get a replacement fuse. Again, this is going to be for John, so... Um, hmm. I'm going to play with this thing off camera and see if I can get that out. I'll be right back. Okay, by using a pair of needle-nose pliers, I was able to get a grip on that center. And it looks like it's turning. We'll see if we can get this thing off. A 
Yeah, it looks like that collar is spinning. Hmm. Right here. Let's try a little bit more. We've got nothing to lose here, guys. I'm going to keep wrestling with this and we'll come back. Okay, we were able to get the, uh, the fuse off here. Um, and I think the fuse is really nothing more than this piece of copper that attaches to um, a, a brass ring that sits inside this fuse. I've got it all taken apart at the moment. And I think if, uh, if you exceed the current draw, it'll just pop that, uh, that fuse. But we've got it apart. We can put it back together, which is good. So we're going to keep that to the side. And here's our socket. Here's what it looks like. And if I'm correct, I can remove that screw down there and pop out that inside and replace those parts with the replacement right in there. Let's see if that comes out. You gotta remember that screw's been in there for a long time. Let me get a little leverage on this thing without bending it. Okay. Let's see. Looks like it's loosening up. How cool would this be? If we could replace that inside. Let's gently tap it. Look at that. There's our piece. There's our original socket. Looks like there's an insulator there, right here. So now we can replace this piece. Very cool. So how are we going to do that? Well, we have our sacrificial um, piece here. Let's see if we can get this nut off. Looks like it may be a different size. It's probably, probably metric, like everything else these days. It's coming off, good. This is all about experimenting, folks, because I've nev never seen anyone do this. Likely it's probably not worth it, but it's original. I'll be right back. Okay, sorry about that um, phone call we had. So um, I've cleaned this out, and it looks like there's a ceramic insulator here, and there's also a ceramic insulator that comes out of the replacement one right here. So, if all goes according to plan, I really don't need to replace the ceramic insulator. So we're just going to throw this in and see what, it, what happens. We have nothing to lose here. Let's see if I can get that hole to line up. And we know that the ears have to be in this opening, like that. Now because we're going to be putting a fuse back on this thing, we're going to just use a washer and a screw on here just like we took off. And the way this works is there's a plastic molded connector that connects to the screw. That's how it, that's where you get your 12 volts from. So let's see if we can tighten this down. Let's make sure it's centered correctly. There we go. Okay, that socket's a little too shallow. So let's just hand tighten it. Okay, so here's the inside of our lighter. Here's our original lighter. Let's see if it stays down. Look at that, it does. And then the way this is supposed to work is when it heats up, the dissimilar metals cause it to pop out. So theoretically, we've replaced that inside part. Very cool. This replacement socket that I'm using, by the way, was $4.99. So, um, looks like that's going to be a winner. Now I need to get this fuse back together and let's see if I can make that work. So let me go do that and we'll be right back. And by the way, the way you know that this is an authentic Ford Thunderbird, Ford Thunderbird cigarette lighter is it says Kuno Meriden, Connecticut. I guess that's the company that made it and that's where they're from. Meriden, Connecticut. 12 volt, that's what it says on the side. 
All right, so we're on our way. So let me uh, let me think about a little bit more here how we're gonna um, get this fuse back together, and then we'll come back and show you that. This is really good. This is working out really, really well. And this will come like this. There's the original. So far, so good. We'll be right back. Okay, I'm just looking at this uh, this fuse assembly, and it looks like that this is not good. That's why I couldn't get it off. So we're going to scrap this fuse assembly. It's not going to work. I'm not. I wouldn't be comfortable giving this back to John this way. So we're going to scrap that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to write to John and ask him first of all, is the cigarette lighter fused in the car? I'm fairly certain that it will be. Um, I just don't know why they have an extra fuse on the end of that. I don't know enough about these to know that. Uh, it could be that the, um, you know, this is kind of like a, a one amp fuse or a two amp fuse and the one in the car is probably shared with something. I don't know. So I'm going to ask John about that. But, uh, but for now, we've actually figured out a way to replace the inside so that the unit is actually functional as an written, it's original. That's the main thing for me is that we're using the original piece. So I'm going to go right to John and see if I can get some detail about this and uh, we'll end up putting up a second episode with this lighter. But this is just a quick and dirty. I don't think I've ever seen anyone do one of these. Again, it's a minuscule piece, but this is the piece that was all rotted and broken and snapped off. So that's the story. So we'll come back with another episode on a follow-up on this one. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you.